Today we're going to discuss why the Chinese Navy is more dangerous with the YJ-18 missile. The Taiwan crisis occurred between the USA and China in 1996, proving that the Chinese naval power needed to be modernized since the US Navy operated at very close distances to the mainland and showed off a significant threat to China during the crisis. So Chinese military investments have focused on acquiring the capability to threaten the US Navy's surface fleet and prevent it from operating in or near Chinese territorial waters in the event of a war. Anti-ship cruise missiles ASCM are the most important source of threat for the US carrier strike group CSG. China has dramatically improved its ASCM strike capabilities through overseas acquisitions and indigenous development. ASCMs generally approach the target at low altitudes, 5 to 10 meters above the surface, and either impact the target near the waterline or dive into it during terminal flight. Modern ASCMs receive offboard targeting data via data link, locate the target using GPS and multimode sensor packages, and strike maritime targets at long ranges, greater than 200 kilometers. The Type 055 cruiser with a well-integrated sensor suite and 112 VLS cells will markedly expand the plant's range and firepower, which could substantially impact a myriad of potential conflict scenarios from the Indian Ocean to the Korean Peninsula and many in between. Because in addition to the Luyang-3 guided missile destroyer and Rinhai carrier group, Type 055 is equipped with a new vertically launched YJ-18 based on Russian SSN-27, a long-range supersonic ASCM. That's why Washington tends to get nervous about China's new missile, which Beijing rather likes. This video is a collaboration with Naval Library, the world's most comprehensive naval database. You can find out both vehicle specifications and detailed descriptions. Get access to the Naval Library service by using the link in the description. Now, let's have a look at the YJ-18 in detail. The YJ-18 is a Chinese cruise missile with variants for anti-ship and land attack missions. It is reportedly derived from the Russian 3M-54E Club missile and entered service around 2014. The YJ-18 was developed by the China Aerospace Science and Industry Corporation CASIC 3rd Academy starting around the mid-1990s. In 2009, references to the YJ-18 program surfaced in Chinese documents exploring metallurgical requirements. Among the first U.S. sources to discuss YJ-18 development was an August 2010 report which referred to the missile as the CHSS NX-13. The missile was finalized in 2013 and entered service in 2014. China first displayed the YJ-18 on state media in 2014 and again during a military parade in 2019. The YJ-18 specifications represent a notable improvement over China's older ASCMs, possessing two and three times the range of the earlier 3M54 and YJ-83 respectively. The YJ-18's range and lethality support China's broader anti-access area denial strategy to defeat U.S. forces in a regional military conflict. According to one report, the YJ-18 was specifically designed to defeat the Aegis combat system. Consequently, the People's Liberation Army plans to deploy the YJ-18 on its submarines and surface ships. The missile may also replace the YJ-62, fielded by ground-based coastal defense units. 
In addition, the YJ-18 is an anti-ship cruise missile bearing a close external resemblance to the supersonic 3M54E. Though its physical dimensions are unknown, the YJ-18 likely approximates the 3M54E's 8.2-meter length, 0.514-meter diameter, and 1,579-kilogram weight, though one report claims it is shorter and lighter. Like the 3M54E, the YJ-18 features a multi-stage propulsion system using an air-breathing engine to cruise at Mach 0.8 and a solid rocket booster to travel at Mach 2.5 to 3.0 in a terminal dash to its target. The YJ-18 has an estimated range of 220 to 540 kilometers while carrying a 150 to 300 kilogram payload. The missile can fly at sea-skimming altitudes using a combination of satellite navigation, BEDO, and an active radar seeker for guidance. In terms of variants, China has developed several YJ-18 variants, primarily differentiated by their respective launch platforms. They are YJ-18 is the first production model. It was designed to launch from submarine torpedo tubes for anti-ship missions and may have a shorter range than later variants. It entered service in 2015. YJ-18A, a model designed to fit shipboard vertical launch systems VLS, it is fitted aboard the Luang 3-class destroyer and Rinhai-class cruiser. It entered service in 2015. YJ-18B, a submarine-launched variant designed for land attack missions. It fits in VLS tubes aboard the Song-class SS, Yuan-class SSP, and Shane-class SSN. It entered service between 2016 and 2019. YJ-18C, a March 2019 report said that China was developing the YJ-18C, a land attack variant designed to deploy in commercial shipping containers. Russia has developed a similar containerized launch system for its 3M54 Club K missile, which fits four missiles into a single container. And a coastal defense variant. Images suggest China also deploys a truck-based YJ-18 variant for coastal defense, although U.S. government sources have not confirmed this development. It reportedly entered service around 2015. China may also be developing an aircraft launch variant as well. Talking its service history, in April 2015, the U.S. Office of Naval Intelligence confirmed that the YJ-18 entered service with the People's Liberation Army Navy plan. The missile now reportedly equips Luang-3 Type 052D class destroyer, Rinhai Type 055 class cruiser, Song Type 093 class SS, Yuan Type 041 class SSP, and Shang Type 093 class SSN. In June 2018, video footage reportedly showed a YJ-18 fitted aboard China's Shang class nuclear submarines. Earlier reports from 2016 and 2017 also appear to show the submarine launched YJ-18 variant. In conclusion, in contrast to the situation in 1996, China can now hold the U.S. Navy's surface fleet at risk at significant ranges from the mainland. Moreover, the extent of the threat to the U.S. surface fleet continues to grow. China's anti-surface capability is founded on four developments. The establishment of an increasingly capable long-range surveillance system, which improves the plan's ability to detect and track surface ships at long ranges, the deployment of sophisticated anti-ship cruise missiles and the development of an ASBM with a range of 2,000 kilometers. The acquisition of strike aircraft and surface ships with more excellent range and power. And the deployment of new classes of larger and quieter submarines armed with both torpedoes and cruise missiles. The actual capabilities of China's new ASCM are still unknown but the revealed abilities prove that U.S. Navy carriers may not enjoy unquestioned dominance for much longer. Thanks for watching and see you in the next videos.